One of our favorite uh, topics of conversation around here is how to get the best night's sleep. And it turns out it may be just as simple as reaching into the dirty laundry basket. Dan Riskin, our CTV science and technology specialist, is here to explain. Dan, I am going to require that you explain. Okay. What does laundry have to do with sleep? It's the coolest thing. So uh, they did a study at uh, UBC where they took undergrads that were in a couple, right? So, yeah. And they'd been in a relationship for a few months at least. And what they did is they had the first person from the couple wear a cotton shirt under their normal clothes for one day so that it kind of smelled like them. Yeah. And then they gave that shirt to the other person in the couple and said, use this as a pillowcase. But they didn't just give them one shirt. They gave them two shirts. One was their partner's smell. The other one was either a clean shirt or somebody else's shirt. Okay. And then, so you've got these two pillowcases and you use one as a pillowcase for two nights and then you use the other one as a pillowcase for two nights. And they ask you, how well did you sleep? Yeah. And what they found was people who thought, I'm wearing, I have my partner's shirt, they reported that they slept better. Okay, but so so it's the familiarity, the smell? It's the, the idea, ah, this smell? is the smell of my boyfriend slash girlfriend, ah, this is fine, now I'm gonna get a good night's sleep. They wake up in the morning, they say they got a good night's sleep. Nine extra minutes of sleep? Well, this is a slightly different thing. What really happened was, the people didn't really know which one was their partners. They, sometimes they were wrong. Oh, and it was a placebo. Yes, and what really happened is the one that really was the smell of the partner really did have an effect. Ah, so when okay. they were wearing wrist monitors, you get, on average, like it just showed, nine minutes more sleep if it smells like your partner. There's so, this thing that happens in your brain where you're like, I'm gonna sleep better because I smell somebody I recognize. And yes, it, maybe it's a disarming thing? Maybe, yeah, it's a comfort thing. I mean, it's been shown for babies. Babies sleep better when they can smell their mom. Mm -hmm. And so maybe that just never goes away. And the person that you're used to smelling, that smell helps calm you down. Now, the effect size, nine minutes a night doesn't sound like much, but over a week, that's an hour of extra sleep. And that is right in line with the extra sleep you get from melatonin pills. Nine minutes a night, I, w I, would, I would I would. You would kill, kill for that. that. Yeah, yes, the I other would. great way to get a full night's sleep is to not work on a morning show. Just that, that, there is that, there yeah, is. That's... And one last thing that has nothing to do with what we're talking about, but I firmly believe, and I have no science to back this up, but maybe you can look into it for me. So I believe that that baby smell yeah. Like, yeah that, that is like a defense mechanism that they've developed over time. It's a good smell. You smell them and you want to protect them. That's my that's my theory. Dude, I don't on the top of the head, nowhere you're, else. You're totally right. Yeah. The smell of the top of a baby's head. Yeah, and, and olfaction smell, you know, like 20, 30 years ago, it was this big thing that like humans don't smell very well compared to dogs. But the more we look at it, we're just not paying attention to it. Humans actually yeah. use smell quite a lot. All right, wait, we've got uh, we've only about 45 seconds left to talk about this thing. Yes. Let's show this video here. All right, so this is your happy place. Yeah. Hundreds of thousands of bats descending in a batnado on a town in Australia. Um, I always why say, is this happening? If you're gonna have a nado, this is the nado you want, is the bat nado. Way better than a tornado well, or the, a shark nado. Well, we had the lo locust nado, but what, what, what is going on Those here? are huge bats. So those bats probably uh, wingspan, probably like crow size, maybe raven sized. It's just a bunch of migratory bats that have landed in this town in Australia and everybody's freaking out a little bit. It's unclear if it's related to the fires or the especially hot summers that they've had in Australia. Yeah. Nobody quite knows what they're doing there. You love this. I would go there in a heartbeat to see those bats. Those are big, beautiful flying foxes. They look scary from a distance, but they're gorgeous bats and I hope everybody, I hope the bats move on and I hope everybody what's, gets what's, over what's it. What's bat poo called? Guano? Guano. So much guano. There'd be a lot of guano, but it'd be worth it. To see those bats, can you imagine? That's a judgment call. I'm oh, not, I'm not, okay. Love it. Dan Riskin, you odd, odd man. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching. If you like this, be sure to subscribe here. And you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.